It may have taken me almost a lifetime of golfing, but I have really fallen in love with golf trippers, and I'm gonna check out this one by Top Flight. What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. You know, I have, like many golfers, kind of poo-pooed and shied away from golf trippers in the past because they seem like a single-use club and they kind of seem like a game improvement, cheating kind of cop-out club. But I have been using some and they are pretty awesome. And for some of us who just want to enjoy the golf game and have a good time and play the best golf we can, why wouldn't you add this? And especially as I've gotten rid of woods, uh, I have found that I've had capacity in my bag to add a product like a golf tripper. Now, I've tried a few and I picked this one up. This is actually by Top Flight and it is their Top Flight Gamer Tour Chipper and it looks pretty good. It looks like maybe one of the nicest ones that I have seen yet but we're going to take a close look at it today and then try it out. So I have been using chippers lately and I've been so impressed with them that I decided to pick up this and maybe some other ones to just try out. You know, for me, getting out of the rough like this onto the green, especially when you have to clear two, three, four feet of rough is a really tough shot. You know, I normally I'd use a seven, eight iron, choke down on it and try to get the ball to fly, sit and run. But the problem with that is when you choke up on an iron, you lose a lot of perceived club head weight and it doesn't kind of push through thick grass. And so I have tended to chunk it or even shank them in some cases. And a chipper like this has basically saved my butt. It has really made some awesome shots and you just use a putting stroke on it. And that's what I really love about them. Now I picked this up because I was actually looking for a couple of things. One, I was looking for basically a 45 degree chipper because I like getting as much loft as possible so that I don't have to worry about it running too far. I'm always paranoid that I'm going to run the ball off the green into the shortcut or the rough on the other side. And so having some loft means that you might get a little backspin, it might sit a little bit better. And so this one has about 45 degrees. I think they advertise it as 42, but it's much steeper than the typical 37. So I really like that. On top of that, Top Flight is a name you know, and this is kind of funny to me because a lot of companies don't make chippers because they are considered kind of this black sheep club. So you can see right in there, Top Flight. Now, Top Flight's not a premium name, but they make golf balls and golf clubs, obviously, and they have been around a long time. So it's not just a startup that you have never heard of. So I do like that. And I would say that, you know, kind of starting here on the grip, which tends to be like a typical grip this actually seems like fairly high quality you know you can see here it's nothing exotic or anything but it's got a nice good feel kind of like any club which on some of the really cheap clubs you know these grips can be really really cheap in fact sometimes i've taken them off and i found that they aren't even glued down there's no tape or anything under them so nice grip there you get a steel shaft here which to me seems like it's about any putter shaft now i will say this shaft tends to be a little too long for me i measured it and it's 35 inches that's not obscene for a putter but for me I'm at about a 34, 33 and a half inch to be comfortable. What ends up happening is when I bend over here and put my head right above the club head on a putter, a 35 inch shaft kind of tends to poke me right in my belly. Now I may have an extra inch of my belly that I shouldn't have either, but if you like a shorter putter shaft, this might be a little long. And so you might have to get this cut, trimmed, and then re -grip. So just kind of keep that in mind. You might be able to get them in some different shaft lengths, but I just bought this kind of straight off of the rack. Then down here, the club head here, especially for a chipper, is actually probably the nicest one I have seen. Now, Odyssey used to make one, and this looks very similar to it, in that they have this insert face here, which seems like a urethane or something like that, but it seems kind of like a plastic. There's a texture on it. Obviously, you have some grooves there and the Top Flight logo, but what I like about this is it's going to give you, I think, really good feel, as well as kind of have good traction on the ball and maybe put on some of that backspin. So that's kind of nice. You know, for me, having a face like that, DuPont coating that some of the Odysseys had, you know, don't stand the test of time that well. They kind of start getting run down a little bit. So sometimes having a metal face is going to last longer, but I, I kind of like that. It seems like a couple of married technologies here that should help your game. Now you can see here, I think the milling and the finish on this is really nice. You've got some kind of brushed finish around the top. You have this kind of matte blasted finish on the back. Uh, the paint and everything seems really good. A lot of times on these chippers, everything kind of on a close inspection doesn't look great. Even the design on the back here, you've got a little bit of this uh, triangle texture and the color fill 
on the milling and the name and everything it looks really really good so as far as i can tell this is the nicest chipper i have ever seen and i will say you can see here that when you look down on the head it is offset a little bit back which is kind of nice actually having a leading hosel and shaft on a putter makes a lot of sense it kind of makes sure that your hands are ahead of the ball now one of the things that i will tell you is it's got nice weight i'm assuming that this is in the 300 plus grams category and that's really important for a chipper because like i said if i'm just using a regular iron there isn't usually enough head weight to kind of help me carry the momentum through the ball and that's when you get some of those dumped shots so it's got nice head weight it also has a very large sole and that was the other requirement for me is to have kind of this wide sole so that it would kind of cut through the grass float above it those types of things you can use these out of the sand that's going to be very helpful too now the one thing that i'm a little worried about here is you can see how flat the sole is i think maybe just a little bit of bounce here a little bit of a, a hump to kind of give you a little bounce on the ground might be useful because it doesn't have one you have this very sharp edge and i think you might be able to kind of bury this into the ground now i haven't had a problem with my practice shots here on it or anything like that and i think it's a small nitpick but maybe just a few angles of bounce right on that leading edge would be nice just to help you prevent from uh, kind of chunking the club or, or kind of burying the club into the ground. Now that I have thoroughly talked about it, I want to go ahead and try this thing on the golf course and see what we think. Now for me, this is the shot why I picked up a chipper. When you're two, three feet off the green in rough, this is a really tough shot for me. Normally, I would use a highly lofted wedge to try to flop it onto the green. But what that doesn't do is it doesn't necessarily give you a chance to put it in the hole. You're just kind of dropping it on the green. And what I wanted to do is just line it up and maybe give myself a shot to drain some of these or even leave it really close for a one putt. And these chippers are really, really great at this. Not only can you fly it two, three feet, but you can definitely fly it 10 or 15 feet if you really want to. And on the heavy rough, my tendency is to flub it and keep it in the rough. So I'm chipping out of the rough one more time, but this chipper makes short work of it. Now I was worried about that sharp edge and no bounce angle leading me to kind of bury the club head into the rough. Now I didn't have that kind of problem because I think the sole is large enough that it's kind of cutting through even this really, really heavy grass. Now it's not a cure-all and sometimes I was hitting them a little fat, but overall, I was getting them out of the grass much more consistently and easier than I would have with a wedge. Actually, I'm going to leave the ball buried right there. That is pretty bad. I feel like you're going to have to punch this one out a little bit. Well, it's easy to leave some of those really, really short. Not like that, but let's see if we can get a little closer. Again, my club kind of bit into the ground a little bit fat there but still it got it out oh, man. caught the blade on that one not bad that's gonna be an easy in that's short on that one rough I'm leaving them a little short pretty damn good on that one all right this is a shot I struggle with because you can't put it you gotta come out of the rough here Let's see what we do got it a little fat but Still got it out at least. Let's see. Not bad. Half a foot away. It's gonna be a little far away, but it's one putt chance.
Now, if you're wondering if you can use this chipper for long shots, I assure you, you can. Even if you continue to use a putting stroke, you've got to make it a pretty big one, and you've got to kind of definitely put some weight and some muscle behind it. But you can absolutely fly this ball 10, 15, 20, 30 yards even. And what I've noticed here is that if you do fly it up and carry a bunch of yardage, it actually sits pretty well. It will only run maybe a quarter of what you fly it at. So I was shooting some shots 20, 30 yards yards off the green and then they were running probably 5-10 yards beyond that so they are going to kind of run and so you're going to want to sit them on the front edge of the green or even in front of the green but it's nice to be able to clear a bunker you can certainly do that with this now, I'll be honest here that I wasn't expecting a lot from this chipper. I know a lot of other companies advertise their chipper and spend a lot of money online, and I have found them to be generally pretty good. But this top flight chipper was one of the least expensive ones. It seemed to be made to the highest quality and standard, and it just looks and feels and has all the features that I was looking for. The right steep angle, as well as a big sole to kind of cut through that rough. And especially now that I've installed an oversized grip on it, it is just fantastic so it's actually going to be the chipper i'm carrying now because as far as i can tell it's the best balance of everything so if you want to pick up this chipper maybe improve your short game give yourself a chance to sink some of those shots that maybe you were just happy putting on the green before you might find that this is going to give you some strokes back on your game so i'll put a link to it in the description below peter von panda out